Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my tutorial in which I will teach you how to make an image gallery just like you see right here on your screen. And this image gallery will hold nearly any size of an image, as you can see here. You can also click on the image to cycle forward, and there's a gigantic image. You may not necessarily ever use that, but either way, it has that capability, and it also can embed movies, which is really cool. And there's also a previous button, all these other things, and of course, a close button. This is part four of my From Scratch series, in which I show you how to do really cool things from scratch that, as far as I can tell, no one has ever done in a video tutorial. I provide on the screen part one, two, and three of the From Scratch tutorials in which I show you how to create a WordPress theme, a WordPress plugin, a featured content slider, and today, an image gallery. So let's jump right into the code. In this part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you all the HTML and the CSS code that goes into creating this guy. And then in the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna put all the jQuery code and JavaScript code together. And then by the end, you will have exactly what you saw previous on the screen. If you want all of the code right now, there's a link to the code in the underbar. And of course, it's 100% free. So you see right here, I have just basic HTML. I just put that in there to save myself a little bit of time. Then I'm gonna link out to my style sheet and just plug in the reference to it. And I'm calling it lightboxstyle.css. And eventually I'm gonna turn this into a WordPress plugin as well to really beef up the capabilities of my featured content slider that we made previously. And then I'm gonna link out to the jQuery JavaScript code.js. It's in a folder called JS. Put the slash there. And I'm gonna call this lightboxjs code.js. And then close that off. And actually before this guy, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put in my link to the jQuery code. And I'm just gonna copy this. And I'm gonna jump over and actually grab this so I don't have to type it all out. And there is the actual location of the jQuery library I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the framework that is provided by Google. And then I'm going to close off my head section and jump into the body section. And the first thing I have to do is create the link that's going to open up the image or media library or gallery, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to give it a class of open light box. And then I'm just going to give it an empty reference here because when people choose to click on that, it's actually going to be handled by jQuery. Then I'm going to do is come in here and create a div of class equal to lightbox panel. And lightbox panel is going to be the guy that surrounds everything here. Let's get this ugly thing off of here. This is lightbox panel right here. And then this background that's dark, this is called lightbox background. And we're going to get into that in a second. Let's give myself some room. And then right here, what we're going to do is I'm going to just start coming in and defining everything that I want to show up inside of here. And this can be made dynamic so that these images will be pulled based off of other preferences that you might set. So this isn't set in stone. This is what I'm using here. And it doesn't matter if it's an image or what it is because I'm doing all my jQuery changes based off of the class name. That's the reason why we can use pretty much any type of thing in here. It's loading anything with NTT media file as a class name. And I'm gonna put all A just for the heck of it and then close that off. And what you wanna do is make sure that you, you have this display whenever you first start out. This is gonna be your first image that's gonna show up inside of Lightbox panel whenever it is opened. But for everything that follows thereafter, like I have another one called Shaking Hands, I'm going to define the style for Shaking Hands as equal to display colon and one. -E so it's not going to be displayed on the screen. And then I'm going to change the alt text to Shaking Hands. And you can see exactly what's going on here. If I go back to the original one, there's the ape and they're shaking hands. So that's how those are gonna operate. And then for every other image that I wanna be displayed in that light box, I use exactly the same layout. Display none, I don't want it to show until I tell it to show. I want the class to stay the same and the alt doesn't even matter. You can have it be anything you want it to be. So I have another file called penguin and I can let everything else be precisely the same. Penguin, veggies, and I think you get the point. You can get all the code if you want it in the underbar, like I said before. So I'm just gonna proceed here. And after all those have been defined, I have to come in and place all of my buttons that I have at the bottom of the screen, like the previous and next buttons and the close buttons. So I'm gonna create a new div and I'm gonna call it NTT previous button. And I'm actually gonna grab that, copy it. And the source for my previous button, I'm actually using a file that I used before in the featured content tool called FC left 
arrow. The class name is going to be changed to previous media, meaning I want to show the previous media. Alt text is going to say get previous media item. And because I always want the previous arrow to show up, if the lightbox panel is opened, I want to take style display none out of there. That way it'll show if that ever shows on the screen. And then I just have to come in here and close this div. And then I'm actually going to copy this for my next button. And if you don't know what I mean, this right here is the previous button, and this is the next button. So this is going to change to NTT next button. This is going to change to right. This is going to change to next, get next media item. And everything else will stay the same. So then all I have to do is come in here and create the close button. And I'm going to call this NTT close. And of course, make sure that I put ping inside of here because it's a ping file. And this is called NTT close button dot ping. And this I have assigned as an ID. You use IDs when you're 100% certain you're never going to have to define another button like this. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to need another close button, so I put that in there. And I could technically do it for all the other ones, but I know it's good practice to always use IDs whenever you can, but either way. And then you want to close the div that's going to surround everything. And whenever you have a big div like this, it's always nice, like lightbox panel. It's always nice to put a little comment at the end so that you know where that div ends. Exactly what I did. And then I need to define the lightbox background. That's the part that's going to be dark. And then close that div. And then close the body all together. And then close HTML all together. That is all that is required to make this guy work HTML wise. So now I'll jump over into the CSS code and write all that out for you. First thing I'm going to do is remember I defined this as an ID. I'm going to create light box background. And if you forgot, ID means there's only going to be one of them ever on the screen. And ID, you're not quite certain if that's going to be true. Well, I want to display none on this guy, meaning it's going to be on the screen, but it's not going to be displayed for anybody to see it. I want to give it a background color of black because I want it to be dark. Otherwise, why do it? When it comes on the screen, I want the opacity to be 90% so that you can kind of see the background because that's just been the way that people do light boxes. I want to position it absolutely, meaning I'm going to define exactly where the pixel position is going to be. So I'm going to have it start off in the very, very top left corner. And that's how you define that. And I'm going to have the minimum width be defined as 100% meaning the minimum width is going to be the whole entire browser window. And I'm going to have this be 100%. And then the Z index is going to say that I want this guy to be at the very, very, very top, that I want it to go ahead of everything else that's on the web page. So I'm defining it as 1001. And that's it. That's the background, meaning this part right here, this dark part that covers the entire window. All right, so I got to create the panel, the part that actually holds all of our content. And I called it light box panel. Again, I want to display none. Don't want it to show up. I want to position it. Absolutely. I want to have it set at 22% from the top, which is just the way that it ended up working. You might decide you want to change those. That's fine. Change anything you want. I don't care. I'm going to give it a default width of 425 pixels. Background color. Again, you could change any of these things. It's going to be white padding which if you don't know is this area inside of here this area is margin this is padding so that's the difference between that I'm gonna say that I want that to be 15 pixels the whole way around and then I'm gonna say that I want the bottom padding to be 50 pixels just so I have room for all the buttons that I made and then I want to create a border of two pixels and I want it to be solid and I want it to be black and then Z index if I want this to show up above the light box background, I gotta make it bigger than it. So I'm gonna make it 1002. And I set up text align to be center, and I'm gonna leave it that way. And I'm gonna say overflow is gonna be equal to hidden. That means that it's not never gonna happen, but it basically means even though this image right here is bigger than the surrounding area, I don't wanna open up a scroll bar so you can see the whole image. You might change your mind, wanna do that. I'm basically saying that even though the image continues, I want it to end down here. And like I said, you would never put gigantic images in something like this, but I just set it up so that it could handle that situation if it came up. And also, I'm going to define a max height so that it always remains on the screen of 500 pixels and a max width of 800 pixels. And that just makes sure everything stays on the screen. And then that's done. That's all the CSS code you need for that whole entire panel. Close that out. Give myself some room. And then I have to define the CSS code for the button, the close button specifically. And this is going to be real simple. I'm just going to say display none. I don't want it to show up on the screen until I tell it to. 
and I want it to position absolutely and I'm gonna say that I want it to be from the bottom 10 pixels and from the right 15 pixels. A lot of people don't know that you can actually define bottoms and rights for absolute positioning. And then, to save myself some time, I'm gonna copy this, paste it, paste it again, and then I'm gonna define my next button. This is gonna stay none, this is gonna be absolute, this is gonna be bottom. I'm gonna change this to left, and I'm gonna have this be 50 pixels, because I have to make room for the previous button, and that's it. And then I have to come in here and define the previous button. And it's going to be 10 from the bottom. And from the left, it's going to be 15 pixels. And if you do all that with all the jQuery code that's going to be in the next tutorial, you will have this nice little image media gallery that can do pretty much anything you want. Even play movies. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If I already have the next part of the tutorial, there will be a link provided above. Otherwise, till next time.